I just finished this butterfly painting, so while it's still fresh in my mind, I'm going to do another one. Here we go. This is a 12 by 12. I'm going to get another 12 by 12 canvas, so I'll have a matching size, and I'm going to go right ahead with another butterfly. I'm going to put my white background down, just like I did before. Get some white spread around. This helps you have fun with the colors after you put the colors down. Don't want to put too much, but you want some even coverage. Don't want too deep of white. I like when it runs over the edge. Just going to smooth it out a little bit with my hand. And now, like in the previous painting, I'm going to use a little bit of gold. Not much. Make the background just a little more interesting. Gold is really a neat color to mix in with white. It stays pretty soft. It doesn't matter what kind of gold you have, what brand of paint you're using. It stays pretty soft, but it gives, you, gives your white just a little more interest. And then, as I did in the, in the previous painting, the previous butterfly, just a touch of blue. A couple of spots is all. And I'm going to let that run around a little bit. Just a hint. Now I have a nice, interesting background. And I'm going to start pouring some puddles. For this next butterfly. This looks a little a little heavy, but maybe not. So what I what I'm doing with this one, this previous one was just black and yellow. I got more of a rainbow of colors this time. I'm gonna go a little wilder, a little more imaginary, and I'm gonna start I have these in the order that I'm gonna pour them. And I'm going to start making four puddles. All the puddles are going to be in the same order. There's no real reason to vary them because they kind of come out the same. There's enough variation with your hand pouring where they'll all look a little bit different, but hopefully it'll look like all the same butterfly. I have sort of bright, fun colors in this one. touch of yellow. This is the same yellow that I used in the other butterfly. Now I'm going to use a little bit of black again. Black is always risky because if you use too much it can muddy things up but it if it acts right it can really add some interest and it seems like the butterfly looks good with some black in it. So I'm just going to put a dot in there. A little more than a dot. But... And then I'm going to come back with one more pink right in the middle of the black. There's the puddles. Now I'm going to take my little kitchen spatula. It's an offset. It's about a, I don't know, three inch offset spatula. And I'm going to drag these puddles into butterfly wings. I just want to drag them enough to get some, 
this butterfly wing shape and then I'm going to leave it alone because the more you mess with it the more you're going to mix these colors so I just want to do as little as possible but enough to get this shape going and then I can reassess after I do it after I drag all these out into wing shapes that's pretty good for now now I'm gonna go for the bottom set this is an imaginary butterfly so I'm just kinda imagining what these shapes are decide if I want to leave that pink there or not after I do this one Now this one's a little bit small, so maybe I'll come back with the knife and make this a little bigger. This is not bad. I'm going to make these two wings meet. Maybe just drag through this solid pink just a little bit this is, there's some nice cells coming up in all four of these areas all four of these wing areas which is really fun because it reminds me of a butterfly And of course, these aren't meant to be perfectly balanced. You can see each one is a little different. So what I'm going to do now is I think those wings are pretty good. I'm going to take a little bit of black. And I'm going to try and pour a, a skinny black. Just a little skinnier body that I did, than I did last time. Because this black will spread. Now I'm going to take my trusty candy apple stick and I'm going to just shape it just a little bit. Not much. I wanted to get some white mixing through there a little bit. And then here come some little feelers. that one a little better thin this one down just a little bit with some dragging the white this is where your white background comes in handy if you want to drag some of the background into something like right here I want to thin down this feeler so I'm dragging the wet white back into it just playing in the paint So now I'm going to take my black and I have my little candy apple stick and I'm going to do my black outline that I like to do and I'm going to make this really wavy so it reminds you of motion, the motion of a butterfly. I always think a little bit of black outline on these really helps define it. But it keeps it fun because you can see I'm not being exact, I'm letting it be kind of spontaneous rudimentary just letting the black go thick and thin give him a little more of a swallowtail here I think for the bottom set and see I'm not even being exactly going around the perimeter here I'm just keeping it really loose. Give him a little tail there. And I think that's pretty darn good. 
You can see how simple this is. Each time you do these, you get a little better. You learn a little something. And I, I like to, to advance what I've learned in the previous painting. So I'm going to turn this around. This is definitely some imaginary colors, but I really think this is fun. Now here's the previous one I did, if you want to take a look at both of them. So tell me what you think. Do you like the butterflies? Because I can do a whole wall of these. I can imagine different colored ones, multicolor, single colors. I can see a bunch of 12 by 12s doing a whole wall of these. So I hope you'll give this a try. Have fun, experiment, play in the paint. The more you do, the better you'll get. And pretty soon you'll have a whole set of something. So let me know. Leave a comment. Subscribe to my channel if you haven't already. I really appreciate it. Let me know what you think. And check out my supply list, which is down below. And we'll see you next time.